Hello everyone, my name is Savant here, and welcome to the top 10 most underrated cards in Pioneer. Now before we kick off this list, please consider clicking like, subscribe, and click the bell to keep up to date with all the latest videos from yours truly, it really helps me out a lot. Now, in case you've been living under a rock for the past few weeks, Pioneer is a new Magic the Gathering format. It ranges from Return to Ravnica onwards, and the only cards currently banned are the 5 Allied Fetchlands from Tarkir Block, Felidar Guardian, Oath of Nyssa, Leyline of Abundance, and Veil of Summer. It's proven to be massively popular, with hundreds of new decks putting up results on Magic Online in the few weeks since its release. While many cards have obviously shown immediate success, such as Thoughtseize, Harden Scales, and Spellqualler, there are currently more than 6,000 cards legal in Pioneer. That means it's likely that some cards aren't getting the time to shine that they deserve. So, this is my top 10 most underrated cards in the Pioneer format that I think could see success. Number 10. Glorybringer. This Amiket Limited Bomb comes in at number 10 as it's already seeing some play, but I feel it has the potential to be the premier evasive threat in red. It has a fast clock that requires immediate attention, it can ambush a low loyalty planeswalker and fly over board stalls while also helping to cleave through your opponent's defences with its exert ability. The only potential downside is its converted mana cost. Higher costed spells like this often mean tapping out for them, which usually exposes you to soft counters like sensor or efficient removal like cast down. Losing your one spell for that turn without affecting the board can be a huge tempo loss. Still, a fantastic threat nonetheless. Number 9. Imprisoned in the Moon. This aura is a very clean answer to many problematic permanents in the format. It gives blue based decks hard removal for many resolved issues that they may otherwise struggle with. It's also worth noting that it can even deal with lands, such as Field of the Dead, Ascanta the Sunken Ruin, and Nyctos. It can even have a Spreading Seas effect, potentially cutting your opponent off of a necessary colour. The obvious downsides with this is that it can be removed somewhat easily, and until then, it usually ramps your opponent, once it's not attached to a land, by giving them access to an extra colourless mana. It's a unique card in this format, and one I think people are sleeping on. Number 8. Bring to Light. The Battle for Zendikar Rare is a sweet card, and I think it's been massively overlooked in Pioneer so far. Being able to tutor for an instant sorcery or creature is big game, allowing you to run a more controlling deck with some silver bullets in the main. The mana in this format might even be good enough to play Niv Mizzet Reborn, which you can tutor for by the way with Bring to Light, and go for a Gold Cards Matter strategy, which has been recently making waves in Modern. This type of deck means that not only can you potentially answer anything in game 1, but it can also free up slots in the side, allowing you to have a more focused and potent sideboard plan. You could even run a small wish board with Fae of Wishes if you wanted. A Wilderness Reclamation Shell might also be a good home for this interesting card. The risk with a card like this, however, is it can be a little bit slow. 5 mana is a lot, and if you're facing a very aggressive deck, you'll likely be tutoring for some life gain or a sweeper, and even then that might not be enough. It's also worth noting that the Fairy Time Raveler prevents you from casting the card that you tutor for, and the Time Mage's presence in Pioneer may make it difficult for this strategy to take off. That won't stop me from trying though. Number 7. Mutavolt. This powerful creature land is one of the best ever printed and possibly the strongest one in Pioneer. I have this low on the list as it's definitely seeing play already, but I don't think it's being utilised enough just yet. If you're running a monocolored deck, or a deck with just a light splash, then this is an easy include, as it won't tax your mana base much while increasing your threat density. You can even drop a non-land card or two to fit these in, as they'll help you hit your land drops while also not being a dead draw later in the game. As an activated Mutavault counts as all creature types, they benefit from any and all tribal or lord effects, such as Master Waves as plus one plus one for elementals, or making Wizard's Lightning cost two generic mana less. This is something that's often overlooked and can help you squeak out a win at times. The main downsides to this card is that it can't be put into just any deck due to mana requirements, and losing a land in combat or to a regular removal spell can be a huge tempo loss. Still though, if you can fit it in, it's definitely worth it. Number 6. Soulfire Grandmaster This Fate Reforged Mythic is another unique card on the list, as it's one of the very few cards in the format that gives lifelink to instants and sorceries you control. It also returns spells to your hand upon resolution instead of putting them into the graveyard, allowing you to gain extra value from every spell. This is currently seeing no play, but it's made this list for a few reasons. This can be included in a Jeskai Fires of Invention deck. If you have this out with the Fires of Invention and 7 lands, you can activate its ability to return the next instant you cast to your hand, then cast Nexus of Fate for free off of Fires. 
Nexus will return to your hand upon resolution, allowing you to keep casting it again and again. This will essentially give you infinite turns, or as many as you need to win the game. It's also worth considering for a Boros aggro deck. The baseline stats are good, and giving your Wild Slashes or Lightning Strikes lifelink will often be more than enough to race other aggressive strategies. Now the cons to this card is that it's quite vulnerable to removal. It's got pretty low toughness and gets hit by Fatal Push, and it doesn't affect the board as it comes down. With that said, it may be a high risk, but it's got the potential to give a very high reward. Number 5. Fiery Impulse This 1 mana instant is currently being overshadowed by Wild Slash, but I assure you it's worth examining your decks to see if this might be a better fit. It is a very cheap and efficient removal spell that scales later into the game. It's almost like Red's analog to Fatal Push. Its ideal home is in a slower, more controlling deck, one that aims to win by overwhelming the opponent through attrition and massive haymakers, rather than with chip damage and burn. The drawback of this spell is that it only hits creatures, which means that against control decks or planeswalkers it is a dead card. But the same can be said for Fatal Push, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. Number 4. Sky Sovereign, Consul Flagship. This chunky boy is an incredible threat. Its Enter the Battlefield ability impacts the board immediately, it helps you to recover from board wipes, and it's immune to sorcery speed removal. It also enables you to pivot into the role of aggressor much more effectively than any single creature could do in most situations. Just a turn or two of attacking with this monstrosity is sure to end the game. The main drawbacks to this, though, is that it does get elked pretty hard by Oko. It does still require 3 power to crew it, and if it gets removed before you get to attack, you essentially spend 5 mana on a lightning bolt. Number 3. Ratchet Bomb Did you know that this mirrored and block rare is Pioneer Legal? It was reprinted in M14, meaning that you can put this into your sideboards right away. This is a fantastic catch-all answer to everything in the format. It's cheap, powerful, and does not discriminate. You can use this to your advantage to remove multiple problematic permanents with one activation. It's also fantastic at removing tokens, stone coil serpents, and hangerback walkers, being able to activate it with zero counters on it. The fact that it's colorless means that decks of any color have answers to almost anything with this. The negatives behind this though are very apparent. It's incredibly slow, often taking several turns to remove what you want, and it will also hit your own stuff. It's not perfect, but this will do the job in just about any deck. Number 2. Karn the Great Creator Karn is a real sleeper card, with very few showing up in the MTGO League list so far, but this card is a fantastic call right now. Its passive ability shuts off activated abilities on opponents' artifacts. This means no more walking ballista activations, no crewing vehicles, no more spinning Aetherworks Marvel. Karn allows you to reserve part of your sideboard as well as a small wishboard, giving you access to sideboard cards in game 1, while also allowing you to keep some sideboard cards where they are for games 2 and 3, so as not to dilute your original game plan. The format does have some interesting artifacts worth considering for the wishboard. Pithing Needle, Phyrexian Revoker, Tormod's Crypt, Walking Ballista, Ratchet Bomb, Crucible of Worlds, Bolas' Citadel, The Immortal Sun, Grafdigger's Cage, Torrential Gear Hulk, Damping Sphere, Perilous Vault, Orbs of Warning, Wishclaw Talisman, and Aethersphere Harvester. The only things to note about Karn is that they're not really able to be used as a win condition as they are in other formats, such as with Mycocynth Lattice, and there are significantly fewer utility artifacts available compared to Modern, for example. The idea of having a Torrential Gear Hulk in the sideboard to wish for, though, sounds really sweet. Number 1. Glint Sleeve Siphoner Here we are at the top of the list, old Glint Sleeve. Kaladesh's answer to Dark Confidant is starting to see a little bit more play recently, and rightly so. This is an incredibly powerful card in the right deck. It provides card advantage, it's a difficult creature to block, and it demands an answer immediately. This can start drawing you cards as early as turn 3, and if it replaces itself even once, then it's more than worth it. Similar to Bob, it's almost necessary to kill this creature upon sight, and if you use a removal spell to take this out, you may not have the removal spell that you need to take out the haymaker that follows it. This isn't a perfect card, however. It's absolutely terrible on defense. Walking Ballista is everywhere right now, and it's Siphoner's worst enemy. And as much as the dies to removal argument is flawed, this one literally dies to every single removal spell that sees play in the format. It's not quite Dark Confidant, but it's very close. Do you agree with this list? What other cards should be on here? Let me know in the comments down below. 
If you like this and want to support me, there are several ways you can do so. You can follow me on Twitter, you can join my Patreon, or you can get me a coffee. All links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take it easy.